In this lab, we're determining the melting point of an unknown solid. We have nine potential unknowns this week. First, we're going to get a fast melting point. That's where we're going to raise the temperature quickly, determine a range um, that our melting point is in. We're then going to do a slow melting point, so we'll raise the temperature slower, determine a more accurate melting point of our unknown. Then we're going to compare it to the nine melting points of the known compounds, and we're going to do two mixed melting points. So we're going to take the unknown and a possible known, mix them together. If we don't see any change in the melting point, that confirms the identity. If it is not the same compound, we'll see a depression and broadening of our melting point. So that means our melting point range is getting lower and wider. And that's because when we introduce that new compound, we're introducing an impurity. And that impurity causes a breakdown and a weakening of the intermolecular forces in the present and the unknown compound. All right, so we have the unknowns that were previously made. They all have different letters on them to represent them. So this is like unknown I. I haven't looked at the list of which unknowns and are knowns in about a year. So I'm going to this completely blind as you go. I'm going to look away. I'm going to just grab one. Take this one. All right, so we're going to do unknown D. Move these to the side. I also wanted to show you one of the melting point capillaries. So they're not like a normal capillary where they're open on both ends. It has one end that is open and one end that is rounded and closed so that our solid will go down into here. We're gonna load this in the hood just so in case there's any dust, we don't break that in. And once you load it in, you're gonna probably need to hit it on the table a couple times, do it lightly so you don't break it. And so that all our solid collects down here at the bottom. And this is what we'll insert into the melting point apparatus. All right, so we have our unknown. It's a white shiny powder. And now we're gonna take this over to the melting point apparatus. All right, so this is our melting point apparatus. There is a switch here on the side. There's also instructions on how to operate it here. The first thing we're gonna to to do is set a plateau. So the plateau is where it's going to stop heating. And then if we're doing a slow melting point, we can ramp it from there. If not, it, we can turn it off from there. The melting point of our potential unknowns that should be shown on the screen now. So as you can see, the melting points range from about 109 all the way over to 173. So in this case, we want to set a plateau above 173. So we're going to go for like 175. So to set your plateau, hold down the plateau set and use a button to raise the temperature. My finger's kind of blocking it. Right now it's about the 80s. Went too high, so now we're going to go down a little bit. So I think 175 is probably good. For this fast melting point, we're just looking for a range. All right, so now if we hold the plateau set, you can see that it's at 175, and the second light is blinking orange, which means we are setting the plateau. There are some holes on the side. Let me move the camera so you can see them. There are two holes on the side here that you will insert the closed end of your melting point apparatus into. So you could potentially run two at a time if you need to, but I'm just gonna be running one. We're gonna put in our melting point tube and you'll be able to see it through the hole here. There'll be two grooves and a light that helps you see it. And you look through the hole there. In order to start heating, we just press the start button. Once, and once the red light comes on, we know it's heating up. And I will join you once we get our fast melting point. You just want to write the temperature that it starts melting at and the temperature that it fully becomes liquid at. All right, so our fast melting point, it started melting around 126 degrees Celsius and ended around 131 degrees Celsius. Our fast melting point is going to be a little bit high usually because it takes a bit of time to give the, um, for the heat to transfer from the block, heating block to the sample. And so now we're going to do a slow melting point starting a bit below um, 126 degrees Celsius and we'll ramp it slowly once we get to that point. So to stop it, go ahead and press stop and it'll begin cooling down the block and we're going to go ahead and make up another sample to do our slow melting point. Alright, so we waited for the temperature to come back down to about 90. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in and let it um, get to the 90 degrees temperature. So I'll just put it in. Let it sit in there a little bit so it gets to 90 degrees. 
and the same temperature as the heating block. This time, we're going to set our plateau lower than our fast melting point so that once we get to that plateau, we can ramp it. So we'll heat at about two degrees or two, Celsius, two degrees Celsius per minute. Um, so we'll go ahead and press plateau and set our plateau. This time we're going to set it to, I think, 120 degrees. Sounds good. So there's two possibilities at this point that of this unknown. I think it's either benzoic acid or benzamide. Benzoic acid has a um, melting point of 123 degrees Celsius and benzamide has a melting point of 126 degrees Celsius. So I think it's either one of those two. They're both pretty similar in um, appearance. So we're gonna go, I think 120 is a good start. If we do, if it does start melting beforehand, we can do a, another slow melting point. So we're gonna go ahead and press start and find out the slow melting point. All right, so once the plateau light comes on, this orange light here, we can press start again. The screen light means it's gonna be ramping at two degrees Celsius per minute and should allow us to get us more accurate melting point. All right, so now that we've stopped, we can press the stop button, let the heating block cool back down. Our slow melting point was 122 degrees Celsius to 124 degrees Celsius. So it seems likely that our um, identity is benzoic acid. We'll go ahead and test it with both benzoic acid and benzamide, mixing them together. So we'll get a little bit of the unknown, a little bit of the solid, or the known in there. And we'll get slow melting points for each of those. All right, so I've got a mixture of benzoic acid and unknown D. We'll go ahead and put it in. If it's the same compound and the identity is on benzoic acid, we'll see that get the same melting point. If it's lower, if it's not the same compound, we'll get a lower and widened melting point. So this time it is with benzoic acid. And I have the plateau set to 120 again. And I'm just going to press start. All right, so our mixed melting point was 122 to 124 again. So that does confirm it is benzoic acid. But we'll double check that with our benzamide. And we'll go ahead and get a mixed melting point of that. All right, so now I have a mixture of benzamide and our unknown. We go ahead and load it into the melting point apparatus. All right, this time, since we got a confirmation in uh, that it was benzoic acid, just to check, we're gonna run benzamide, but I'm gonna set the melting point, the plateau a little bit lower to 118, and we'll go ahead and start it getting heated up. So we expect the melting point to be lower as well as the range to be broadened. Right, so our melting point, we mixed it with benz benzamide, started melting a lot quicker, all the way down at like 111 before we even reached the plateau. So definitely not benzamide. Um, our range was about 111 to about 118 when I noticed it was fully liquid. You can see it's quickly hardened back up. But that confirms the identity of unknown B is benzoic acid, and that was confirmed by the answer key. So, unknown D is benzoic acid.